Hello and welcome back guys. So in this video what I will do is I will talk about what is DNS and why do we use UDP as a protocol for a DNS name resolution. Okay, so mm, what is DNS, right? So DNS is domain name system. So why do we use DNS? Why was it needed? Because see what happens is that so Facebook com IP is let's say 10.1.10.1.10 I guess so this is the IP address right so suppose imagine like you have to type in this thing it's very hard to remember right so in a mm, if this is denoted in octets so or MAC address is denoted in hexadecimals right so suppose if you had to go to let's say something else <coughs> Twitter so Today you don't have to remember the IP address, right? So it could be 1.1.1.3, whatever, right? So it could be anything, right? Any public IP address. So uh, what this DNS thing does is that, so what does DNS resolution does is that it basically converts your facebook.com into a IP address, which the computer can understand, okay? That's very important thing so that's why we need dns server configured okay otherwise you won't uh, know the ip address of any website that you are trying to browse okay so it's very hard to remember that's why we have a dns server which keeps the record for the name of the site and correspondingly it matches to a ip address and then the co computer basically forwards the data to this particular IP address or whichever site you are browsing and towards its IP address okay so let's suppose you are a user over here so what you do you first of all send a packet over here and then after that uh, the, if there is a data in the caching server what it does is it will give you a response like okay uh, Facebook's IP is this 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 so after that what happens is that uh, the user then it's forwarded to the router and then router basically carries, carries forward this particular uh, packet to the destination IP address okay so let's talk about DNS server how many types of DNS server are there and DNS server so basically there are five types of DNS server one two three four five five types of DNS server first is named caching server or first is caching server second is recursive so 13 root server tld name server and after that thousands of name server okay and these are the uh, different types of uh, server that you have a okay, DNS server so basically what happens is that so as you know from the name itself caching server is like so it has a memory uh, it's a, it, it saves that as a cache so basically uh, you you are a user and then there's let's say another user so suppose you search for facebook.com once you have requested it what happens is that that data stays in the server for a a while so it might have time to live right so a certain time period it will stay in the server like your ARP table right it stays in the computer for a while and then it gets deleted after a period of time you can configure that and all but back in those days what used to happen is that it used to be for a long period of time but now it's it's being reduced to uh, a very small fraction of time why is that because uh, in the old in the uh, old days what you did know what the ISP did not used to have is that they did not have much needed bandwidth right so that's why they did not want it to waste it that's why in order for that uh, what they did was they actually uh, had a casting server for one day so it might take a bit of time if they are still in the older system right to update so uh, what is recursive server so a, a server can be a recursive uh, a caching server but it's it might not be a recursive server but a recursive server is also a caching server as well you can say that so what happens is that 
recursive server is like it just establishes the connection itself so what happens is that in the first thing so basically uh, the classic server sends the data to uh, uh, 13 loop server and then basically it sends it back and then it tells like which uh, TID name server has it and then this again tells which actual server actually has it and then it sends the data back and then again it sends it over there and then after that it's it actually receives the IP address of the Facebook and then it's stored in the cache as well and then it gives back the user the actual Facebook address. So suppose you are the first user from this particular network to ask for this particular uh, site's IP. So what happens is that suppose if it does not have it, so what happens is you send a packet and then that gets forwarded to 13 root server. It will ask this guy and then this guy will tell, okay, is this uh, there is some uh, thing in this particular place in the TRD name server. So it, it will again ask the TRD name server. The TRD name server has a record of thousands of name server right and then uh, it will basically say okay go ahead and look over there and then it will again go ahead and look over here so these are the steps that actually happen okay so based on that as you can see it's a very lengthy process right it's a very lengthy process so if you have a cache in memory what happens is that you can save it for a while and then you basically save all the bandwidth right all this bandwidth can be saved right so you're requesting so many packets so we will look into the packets as well how many will be used in UDP connection and in TCP connection definitely TCP connection would be higher in comparison to UDP right so let's have a look at that as well let's have a look at that as well so suppose uh, user is over here and then you have a name or caching server I mean cache or a recursive server a recursive server and then you have 13 root server so it's not only 13 root okay these are 13 13 different authorities you can say this is TLD name server and this is actual name server right so let's talk about the UDP in UDP connection what happens is that so uh, not UDP I mean TCP so in TCP what happens is first of all you have to establish a connection right in UDP what usually happens the first packet that gets sent is basically the SYN right and then it gets a response of SYNAC and then the computer again has to respond with the acknowledgement right so these are three-way handshake right three-way handshake so how many packets are there total three packets right now so this connection established the connection established between the user and this particular caching server right so three packets has been used just for the connection itself now it will have to ask a question like where is facebook's ip or what is facebook's ip so that is again one packet and it has to give an acknowledgement back right what happens is one packet is where is where is the ip second packet will be acknowledgement right that's two packets that's being wasted so that's not being wasted, you can say it's being used. Okay, so that's two packets, right? In total, it's five packets. So, suppose let's imagine, let's imagine like this does not have no cache, there is no cache. So, now what will, what will it have to do? It will have to again ask this particular root server, right? So, for that, what, the, what does it do? It has to first of all establish a uh, handshake three-way handshake so it has to establish a connection three plus two it has to ask a question as well right so where is what is the IP of Facebook and then it will reply with the acknowledgement that's two packet one packet from here one packet from here right so the two thing is done as well uh, let me just change this thing a bit so that you guys can actually this this is one process this is another process this is where and uh, the acknowledgement right and then we have the other packet which will be basically 
far. Mm -hmm. So, it, uh, so that is like it, it sends back uh, acknowledgement, right? Then it will tell, it will have to give a response as well. So, in that case, what happens is that the first thing the root server will send a packet. It will say, "Okay, go and look in the TLD name server." Uh, yeah. In this particular TLD name server, right? So, go here. This is the another packet. So, it has to send back again acknowledgement, right? That's again plus two, right? So what is that? Four plus three, seven, right? So now the connection has to be closed, right? So what happens in that scenario? As we know, in case of TCP, a four-way handshake occurs. Okay. So what is a four-way handshake? Again, so for a four-way handshake, what have what have what needs to happen is that so basically uh, the one user has to send a sim, uh, no fin. Fin, right it has to send the fin and then it gets an acknowledgement back from the other party and then again the same party sends a fin now it has to also send a fin packet right and then what happens this sends pack so how many are there four right four packets so this is called four way handshake okay plus four right now the connection is closed and then it knows where where to go in case of TLD, right? So in this case, how many packets was transmitted over here? Uh, 4, 6, 8, 11, right? 11 packets, same way, it does the same thing over here as well. 11 packets over here as well, again, same thing. 11 packets, right? Okay. Once that is done, what happens is that, so how many packets have been used? 33 of them has been used, right? In here, what has happened? 5 of them has been used, right? Again, after that, what happens is, basically, it will again, uh, now it has the data, right? So now, in this thing, what had, what had only happened? We had established a connection and then we had asked a particular question, right? Now we need to get a reply as well. So in that case, when you get a reply, it will be plus two, that will be seven. And then after we have got the IP address, we need to also close the connection, that is four, right? So 11, so how many packets? 44. So see how many bandwidth, how is is the network, All right? So 44 packets has to be sent, just to, has to be exchanged between different nodes, just to get particular IP for a small website. So just imagine how many IPs are being requested every time, right? So how busy might the, the network might be, right? So similarly, similarly, so, uh, so, so, so if again, like after this user has requested, if another user joins in, in this particular network, Right, so suppose this is your LAN somewhere around and then it have, you have a network of 10.10.2.0 10 10 slash let's go 24 feet. So you have a new user. In this case, what happens? You establish a connection, that's three packet, and then after that you ask a question, where is the IP? And then what you get? You get a response and then you send back up another response of acknowledgement and then what you do, you close the connection as well. So only 11 packets will be used, right? Or only 11 packets will be exchanged between these two nodes, okay? Not only two nodes, there might be another nodes as well, but roughly speaking, right? So that what happens in case of TCP. So if you are doing a name resolution, uh, DNS lookup with TCP connection. Yeah, TCP connection right so what happens if you do the same thing with UDP so you have a user you have a name or caching server uh, caching server caching and then recursive caching this means that all the resolution has been completed name resolution has been completed and the data has been saved right so this is TLD and then this is the exact server exact name server right this is like 13 uh, root server of course there are not only 13 but back in those days what used to happen was that they were specifically distributed over different 
geographical reasons. Okay, so you are a user over here. What happens in case of UDB? You send a packet. What's the IP? After that, what happens? You send another packet. So it, since it does not have the data, right? So it sends like what's the IP and then it gets back another packet. That's two packet, right? In this case as well, two. In this case as well, two. And then what happens? You get a response after this guy has replied. So now we have the data, right? So you reply back as well. So two, two, four, six, eight. So within eight packets, the work is done, right? So a DNS lookup is always done using UDP. Okay. So using UDP protocol because what happens is just it is more like uh, practical as well you know you don't have to do all that uh, three way ANSEC four way ANSEC like just to establish a connection and then only the actual things comes in right so whereas in case of UDP what happens if the data has been dropped what happens you will try again and then basically a thing happens so within eight packets the work gets done right so that also saves a lot of bandwidth and then the network congestion will be very less right it just makes the network more efficient okay so uh, you have to remember the name uh, the caching server recursive server and then basically caching server is basically so a name which has been cached over after all the name resolution has taken place for this particular user the data will stay over here for a while right so it might be the time to live could be different time period so it could be configured as well so based on that now that's a caching server and then after that it's a user request uh, uh, ip then what happens is that it will just have to uh, all this process will happen you open the connection uh, ask where the data is and then basically we'll get the data so in that case it will also get hack as well right both side will send hack and then after that last thing what happens is that we will have a thingy for way ANSIC which is in this part over here where the connection has to be closed as well so it is more efficient comparatively UDP is more efficient that's why we use UDP for mm, domain name resolution okay yeah that's how it works all right guys so yeah that's it for domain name and udp why do we use it and why it is better uh, than to use tcp so i'll see you in the next one take care bye bye